Okay, Coach Van Gundy. So tomorrow, the uh, Kaufman. Are you guys the Shamrocks? Yeah, we're the Shamrocks. That's actually a really sweet uh, lo uh, mascot, you know, when I look at it. Are you guys the original Dublin school? Yeah, we are. Um, Dublin, Kaufman is, is what we are. And then um, I think Scioto opened in 96, I believe, 95 or 96. And then Jerome, uh, Jerome opened up maybe just after 2000. I, I don't know exactly when. But. Those are the three Dublins? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And how many Olin Tangies are there now? How many Olin Tangies are Powell's? Four in Olin Tangy, three in Dublin, three in Westerville, three in Hilliard. It's, it's blowing up. Worthington is still Kilborn and Thomas, right? Yep. It is crazy. Yeah. Like, and, and to see it happen in the 90s and the – because it all happened, like, a lot of that happened in the 90s and early 2000s, right? Yep. And then what does Hilliard have? Bradley – Davison and just those two. Davison's the original, Darby and Dave or and Bradley, yeah. Okay, so they got three. Wow, that is crazy. And a lot of that's been north side of town, right? Yeah, for the most part, I would say. That's crazy. So you guys are the original Dublin. Do you have rivals? Are you are you rivals with Scioto and are you rivals with Jerome or not? Um, I mean, yeah, at any time you have schools within a district, it's kind of a built-in rivalry. But I, I think if you'd ask our football coach or you would ask Hilliard Davidson in general, I think Kaufman and Davidson's always been a pretty big rivalry, especially in football. Um, I think over the course of time, Marysville's always been in our, um, in our conference. That, that was a nice little uh, rivalry we had going on there. Now this year we're, we split. They're in a, they're in a different conference. So. Um, yeah, I, I would say Davidson's probably Kaufman's biggest rival. Okay. So the Central District just doesn't get the respect I think it deserves. I think you guys have – you have a really strong tradition in wrestling, but the Central District in Division One, it just doesn't get the, the, the respect that obviously the Northeast Ohio teams get. And if you look at even like Cincinnati, what LaSalle's done, what Muller's done, Elder, you know, they've got pretty strong programs in the past. But – I think the last Central Ohio State Championship team, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is it Reedy in the 80s? Uh, yeah, I think it's small school. I don't, I don't know if there's ever been a big school uh, state championship team. Well, I, I think you guys are – you're on the track to, to, to changing the trend, Coach. I saw the results. I didn't see the match with St. Edward. And I heard it came down to – did they pin you at 106? Is that what it came down to? Yeah, it was a third period. We were, we were losing the match, I think, by four or five points. We wanted our guy to be active. I, we lose by, by a minor decision. We still lose the duel 36-35. So we told him to wrestle. Let's, let's go for the W, and he ended up getting stuck. And I'd rather see that happen than, than not, not go for the win. And to go into that gymnasium, first thing, when you walk into St. Edward's Gymnasium and you look up at the rafters, that can get a little intimidating to some people, right? Because they got – national titles i believe 10 national titles 20 plus state titles state duels they've got it's insane and it's all sports too it's not just wrestling it is a it's bunch a of stuff and it's, it's an athletic factory and what you know coach urbis howard ferguson built to urbis now to half it, it, it's pretty impressive for you guys to go in there to go toe to toe i know you didn't get the win but is, is this a big program builder is it a moral is it a moral victory at least you know, more. That's that's a tough. Yeah, you know, that's a, that's tough to say. You, you obviously, as a coach, you don't want to, you know, build your resume on moral victories, and you don't want your team to build their their reputation on moral victories. But no, I think it did show our guy that um, we can wrestle at a high level. Um, they they had some guys out, you know, and I we had one, and it's going to be a weird year. I mean, it was an exciting match. I think one thing. Uh, this COVID era is bringing to the fold is just people are scheduling duels that might not have happened even last year. And, uh, you know, I hope Ed's wants to keep, keep us on their schedule. Um, you know, I, I, we loved traveling up there. We don't care about traveling. We want to go uh, wrestle up North as, as much as possible. And um, who knows, you know, we have, we've got a lot of work to do and um, they've got a great tradition and we're just trying to build ours up. Now, speaking of tradition, what's crazy about your program is at the college level in Division One right now, I think you arguably have the most exciting wrestler 
in the United States and NCAA Division One. I, I, totally up for debate. No question with Don Demas. How many two-time state champ for you guys? Yeah, yeah, he was two-time, two-time state yeah. champ. A, a, a crowd pleaser. You know, Pittsburgh, crowd pleaser, took fourth there at the NCAAs. That guy's incredible. That guy can throw you from looking at you. He's got like the force hips. He's a mutant, yeah. right? And he's just <laughs> fun to watch. And then you look at him and then you got, you got Sus Shoemate, at a, you know, the, the highest state champion in the history of Ohio. You know, he did it in the big division, in Division I, 195 pounds. That's the high because I think Chris Phillips was the one before him, was the highest before him at 171, right? So what you guys are doing, it, it, it's groundbreaking. Where does the go for broke crazy style come from? Is that Kaufman wrestling? Because I can tell you, I'm from Oak Harbor, Ohio. I went to Oak Harbor. I wrestled at Oak Harbor. I was a state place at Oak Harbor. And our two best wrestlers in the history of the program are Ian Miller and J.D. Bergman, right? And J.D. Bergman and Ian Miller do not epitomize what Oak Harbor wrestling is about. Oak Harbor wrestling is about single legs, double legs, get att- attack both sides of the body, arm bar on top. That's Oak Harbor wrestling. These guys got these crazy inside trip, flying Bondinis, made up moves because they're freaks. That's not Okarva wrestling. It's not in deck. Is is it similar to what you guys have at Kaufman with Dom Demas and Sashumi? Is is that is that an accurate uh, statement? I, you know, I I've thought about this before. I you know the one thing about Dom is he he had he had a judo background. Obviously, a lot of people knew his brother Josh. Josh was a, a very athletic wrestler. Um, you probably didn't see a lot of that that judo in his wrestling. A lot of low level attacks. Whereas whereas Dom. He'd rather throw you than know you, man. He would just go for, like you said, he'd go for broke. It's so but awesome. There was that, that, that judo background. We had a, a guy named Lennox Woolick, uh, who also is a big judo guy prior to even wrestling. He didn't even really start wrestling until his freshman year in high school. And uh, he ended up placing fourth for us twice. But we welcome all types, you know. And I know um, you, you kind of want to develop a system within your program and you want to um, kind of have an identity as, as, as a team or as a program. But um, – you know, you kind of got to, it sounds cliche, but as a coach, you got to te- teach to the kid. You know, we, we have our non-negotiables. Um, we, something we're hitting really hard this year, but then everything else is icing on the cake. If you're a throw guy, let's be the best throw guy out there. If you're a head and side single guy, let's, let's hit it a thousand times a day. So, I mean, I, I like to say we're, we're kind of in that mold, but it's, 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 we just had a couple judo guys and we really just kind of went with what they were, were best at. So, and, Make no mistake about it. Dom still amazed me. Even coaching in his corner, I would become a fan at times because it was just, he's just fun to watch. He's great for the sport. Yeah, Dom, Dom, no question, is he's a crowd pleaser, man, and I love it. But it, what's wild is, like, our, our style at Oak Harbor is so blue-collar, and then we have these, just, these two mutants that do a bunch of crazy stuff. And I think you have a similar thing, man. I think you guys have a – but, you, you know, the big thing you're – I think the main difference between – Bergman and Ian would be their hips are incredible. Your guys are the judo thing is what I'm saying, right? The judo thing feels like that's like kind of been the, the, the game breaker with the throws with you. Guys, well, Ian, right? Ian was pretty exciting to watch. I mean, Bergman for a big guy was exciting to watch as well. Very. So, yeah. Was... But you get my point. Like I can tell you, George Bergman, <laughs> that is not anything he ever really teaches, but like you do, he fosters, Oh, hey, this is what you got. Oh, oh, you're a freak? Okay, well, we're going to foster that. And they do do that, right? They, they, you guys got to foster that along. I don't think you can just make a kid fit into the mold, right? Like pound him into the mold like that. Like telling J.D. Bergman he can't inside trip 285-pound guys, I think that's detrimental. I think that's wrong because he can do it. You know what I mean? Telling Ian he can't boot scoot guys, it's, once again, you're, 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 you're limiting them, right? And yeah. I don't think you want to tell Don that like you're saying though. Being in those guys' corners, I can tell you I've coached Dean a couple of times. It is like – it's I have coached JD a couple of times. It is like – there. it's unreal. You become a fan almost because it's an awe. And, they're, and you're like, oh, that's not going to work. Oh, that worked. And you guys – yeah, and, and how you've taken those guys and how you've built around it. So you have two brothers on the team, right? You have Omar. Okay, yeah, how Omar do you, Ayub and Ishmael Ayub. It's yeah. Ayub, right? Yep, Ayub. Ayub. So – Omar is the number two ranked guy. He's a freshman. How are these freshmen wrestling at such a high level? I mean, they're coming into they're coming state champion ready as eighth graders. I mean, how are how are you getting a guy like Omar 
to, to compete at such a high level as a freshman? Um, you know, Omar, he has been competing at a high level for a while. Um, I, I want to say he won a, um, uh, maybe a graceful state title. His I, Last year, obviously, there was no state tournament, so it's kind of hard to gauge. Um, he didn't win a junior high title, but I think he took third as a, or as a seventh grader. So he's, he's been a high-level kid for about three or four years. He's, he's, he's been around the block, uh, wrestling on the national scene. His, his older brother, Ish, same, you know, same thing. Um, those guys are good. Um, we still have a lot of work to do with them. Um, Omar's uh, attitude, I mean, we, I, I know, again, coach talk here, but we, we gauge a lot of our, our performances on, on attitude and effort. We're just trying to get those guys uh, to completely buy in what we're selling. And, um, you know, hopefully at the end of the season, Omar's on top of the podium. I know that's his goal, and we've we got to stay focused for that. So I know tomorrow, it doesn't matter what weight you go, it's going to be a challenge. There's going to be five tough matches waiting for you. So we're anxious and, to see where he stacks. And Ishmael, Ishmael's ranked fourth, I saw. And then you got another freshman in Ethan Burden. I see he's ranked seventh. Up and down the lineup, man, you just got it. You are, you're deep. You're deep and you got a solid team at Kaufman. Coach, what does it take to build that? And now Sean Andrews is a good friend of mine, college teammate of mine. He's done a really good job at Marysville. And like we said, there's challenges in the Central District. It doesn't get the respect it deserves, I think. But how do you guys build it? How, you know, Sean has been building for a long time at Marysville, and they've been pretty consistent. How do you build this consistency that you have? It's not just me talking about Dirty Demas and Seth Shoemaker. Yeah. You're, you're consistent. Right. You have a deep team with state qualifiers at 10, 12 of the weights. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about our my, – my staff is ultra dedicated. Um, I could go up and down. I have a pretty lengthy list of guys that have helped me out along the way. Um, and then I have some parents that get it. I mean, they're, they're wrestling parents. They, they understand it's, it's, it's a commitment sport. And I think you have that, and you're already off on the right foot. Um, you know, I – I've been kind of around the block in terms of my, my coaching experiences. I became a head coach right out of college. Um, so I've had a lot of pit stops, but I knew once I got to Kaufman, although the first few years were rough, I knew this was where I was going to stay. It's just a great gig. It's a great community, um, tons of support from the administration. So I'm here to stay. So we know we can build something, look futuristically. And like today, we, we, we enjoy going to our B matches or our JV kids matches because we know they're the future and that's, you know, we're always looking ahead. I don't know how else to say it, but I, that's just – that's me and my staff. So, can't give enough props to, to Coach Schlegel, who's been with me from the get-go, uh, all the way dating back to the Central Crossing and Bishop Reedy days. Coach Jeremiah Weber, who's – I've never met a more dedicated assistant coach. Um, Caleb Courier, I could go on and on. Ethan Burton's dad. Um, but there's a lot of them that, that, have, that have helped out along the way. And I, it's – like I said, it takes, takes an army. So, you know, talking to Todd Haverdo yesterday, first off, I love, I love Todd. I don't know if you have a relationship with Todd at all. Todd's a good guy, great guy, actually. The text messaging, yeah, he's, yeah. he seems like a great guy. And then Eric Burnett, I helped work the camps for Eric for about 15 years. And since I had kids, I haven't really been back to camp more than just a film wrestling. But, you know, I was the toilet plunger and the mat mopper for, <laughs> for 15 years for Burnett Train. It was a great experience. And Eric's one of my best friends, great guy, obviously. Um, I don't know if you have a relationship with him. Scott Hivner, great guy. All these guys are great guys coming tomorrow. But the duels tomorrow, you know, and this doesn't replace a Medina. This doesn't replace a, uh, a Braxville, for me at least. And I, and I know it doesn't for you. But you guys are going to get some really quality matches tomorrow. And I'm just looking at 182 pounds tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. We're looking at Jake Evans, uh, Sal Perrine, Mitchell Broski, and then I think Hivner and the, the Pleasant guys ranked. The Pleasant guys ranked in the top 10 in D3. Yeah. So, so 182 is going to be a meat grinder tomorrow. What do you yeah, think well. Broski gets out of 182 tomorrow for you guys? And, you know, and, and, and what's an outlook? And what do you really want these kids to get out of uh, Illyria, Nordonia, Pleasant, which is another central Ohio team, but small division, you know, uh, Brexville, Illyria. What do you guys, what do you want kids to get out of tomorrow? Oh, man, I don't know. I mean, I, First of all, Elyria put together a great event. Like I said, I, this is gonna be five grinder of a uh, you know grinder of matches. If we were at the Brexville tournament like we were originally planning, we're gonna get probably two or three a day, but that's spread over the course of two days. So we know we better uh, have our hard hats on tomorrow. 
Um, Brodsky's one of them. He has a tough weight. I mean, on paper, things can obviously change by, by the time weigh-ins are tomorrow morning. I know we, as a team, aren't going to be at full strength, but we know we have some great individual matchups that we're, we're really looking forward to. Um, but again, one match at a time. Brodsky knows from, from match one on, he, you know, you let one loss turn into two, it's a long day. So and you, you could also ride that momentum wave that happens with a big W. So again, again, to coach talk, it's going to be one match at a time. We're just going to get these guys ready. And, and at the end of the day, we're going to have a lot, a lot of evaluating to do. Uh, give them a couple off, get ready for the second half of the season. Keep evaluating. Roski could be the number one guy after tomorrow with a big day. I mean, there's just no doubt, but what you're saying, one at a time, one at a time, right? So speaking of one at a time, if we get to 195 pounds tomorrow and the dual meet is in hand one way or another, could we see a bump against Brexville with Shoemate versus Vanadia? Because I, that, I, listen, that's must see TV. You already know that. But if it's in, if it's in hand one way or another, mathematically you won it or you lost it, could we see a crazy bump or a crazy match like that? No, I think what you said, um, if there are no team implications at that point, it's probably more likely to happen. Um, you know, I base most, if not all my decisions around the team first, and then, then we look at the individual matchups, but, uh, you know, I, that, that's something I probably won't know until, I don't know, 2.30 tomorrow. I, don't, I, I actually don't know what, what time that duel is. I think it's our third duel. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I would never rule it out. Um, so I hate, I hate to keep you hanging, but it, it could I mean, happen. coach, come on. You were trying to win the duel. I get that. You don't have to, I'm not putting pressure. You do what you do. I, you know, we're tr- you're trying to win. No, I, I, you know, I, I, I like the idea of it. It was supposed to happen at the state tournament last year. And, and obviously the state tournament didn't happen. Um, so yeah, we're, it's a possibility. Okay. So I talked to coach Mark Marinelli. He does a great job. Another central Ohio guy. And he had a couple runner up finishes at DeSales, which is a totally different deal. And now Palmer's taking that over, but, I talked to him and everybody I talked to is Ohio state bananas. Whenever I talk to Columbus people, are you an Ohio state guy? Are you a big Ohio state fan? And you know, Mark Marinelli wants guys to go to Ohio state. Mark Marinelli was a two time all American for Ohio state. He wants guys to go there. He wants the Buckeyes to win trophies every year. Are you one of these Ohio? No, I, I, am, I am a diehard Buckeye fan. I'm a diehard Buckeye fan. I'm a diehard football fan, um, high state football fan, you name it. But, but when it comes to wrestling, I think you have to put a different um, lens on, so to speak, because you are so close to the sport. And, and the great thing about that is Ohio State is, is a marquee program as well in wrestling. Um, so it's a win-win for me. You know, obviously with Seth committing to, to high state, He's going to be close to home, I guess, from a greedy standpoint. It would be nice to be able to watch him. Um, But it's hard to argue that High State isn't one of the marquee programs up there with Iowa and Penn State and a short list of of other other programs. So it just helps that, yeah, yeah, I'm a diehard Buckeye fan. And most most people that are born and raised in Columbus are. So, (laughs) Where are you from? Where did you go to high school? I originally went to Groveport High School, Southeast Columbus. Did you go to the Groveport Madison? The Grove, yeah, I know, I know the Mark Neiman. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming. We're teaming up. We're teaming up. We're gonna team I know up. His brother I, Pat, he was in the same grade as me. And, yeah, you know what? I taught a girl at Riverside High School. Her dad was a state placer for you guys for Groveport, uh, Front Apple. Oh, was it Todd Fronapple? Todd, up, Todd Fronapple. I taught his daughter at, at <laughs> yeah, Riverside. He was Super nice people, really player. nice guy. Uh, yeah. uh, Neiman told me, and I think Dad told me, uh, Todd, Todd, right? Todd Fronapple? Yeah, He's, Todd, and there was Josh, and then Rex. Was like 6'2", and he was a 112 founder. Oh, man, he was so tall. <laughs> yeah, huge 112 founder, right? Like, like a 112, right? Yeah, he was, he was really big. Yeah, like a big, gigantic – one twelve hundred, and that is a tough, gritty area, man. That is a tough, gritty area. Okay, who's the guy? Okay, so here's the question I've asked people before. Um, whenever somebody leaves Columbus, right, it's almost like it's like they've committed a sin. Who's the NFL running back? Who's your guy's NFL running back from Groveport who went to Michigan oh, Le'Veon State? Bell. Le'Veon Bell, right? And, and, and you guys, people act like whenever someone leaves there, like 
why didn't you do that? I asked somebody a couple of years ago. Uh, I think it was, what's the kid at Virginia Tech that Patty Gallagher beat in the state finals? Uh, Connor Brady. I asked him why not Ohio State, right? I think, do you think that's appropriate question whenever, if Seth doesn't choose Ohio State or, you know, Don Demas, why did you go to Oklahoma and not Ohio State? That's an appropriate question, yes? Oh, that's an appropriate question. Yeah, I mean, every kid has their reasons. I mean, uh, some kids just want to get away. I mean, yeah. yeah it's, well, my wife's from Ann Arbor, Michigan, right? So what's the immediate question you thought I – what do you think I asked my wife the first question when I met her? You know, why did you go to Michigan, right? Why are you here? You know, her high school's right across from the big house, and – I've caught heat from that. People are like, why, why do you think that's a good question to ask? I'm like, I think that's a great question to ask, as a matter of fact. Oh. Right? I got yeah, yelled at I, for that by somebody. Who it was. But anyhow, somebody yelled at me for asking why didn't Connor Brady stay. And, you know, and, and like you said, some kids just want to get away, right? So, uh, Coach, Haverdale's been at Brexel for 20 years. Uh, Burnett's been at uh, Elyria going on 25, 24, 25, I believe. How many years have you been at Kaufman? Uh, I think this is year nine. This is my ninth year, I'm pretty, pretty sure. That, it is amazing what you have done in under a decade. It is, wow. What would you say to a young coach right now coming in, maybe a first year, second year coach who's trying to build what you guys have built or what Todd's built at Brexville or what Eric's built at Elyria? What would you say to a young coach and what, what's some advice? I would say, you know, spend the first five, ten year, whatever it takes, just learning, um, just trying to – fine tune your craft, so to speak. Um, but then, you know, don't find a job that, that fits you and, and that you can settle in. Um, unfortunately, my, like I said earlier, my eye was all over the place and I finally found my and and I know I'm not going to leave Kaufman. It's because it's, it's, we've worked really hard to build it up and we want to see this thing through. We have kids in the program. Um, my, my kid's a, a seventh grader and, you know, coach Weber has four boys, one being and Coach Schlegel has a, a younger son. So, I mean, we, we all want to see our kids, you know, come through the program. And, uh, but it, it's, it's just been a nice fit. I mean, it, like I said, it, these eight years have been – the eight prior years have been – they've been great. Even the first few that were a little rough, um, I knew I, – I saw, you know, light at the end of the tunnel. Um, just a good community, like I said, a great school. Sports are important at Kaufman. So, I couldn't ask for more. So, what would you say to someone like me? who's got two young kids. I got two boys. I got a three and a four year old. What would you say to me about, about getting my kids involved in wrestling? How old are they? Two, two and, four? and two and uh, three and four. Sorry. Yeah. I would say get them involved, man. Five, six, whenever, you know, make it fun early. And then, um, you know, get them involved early when they don't know any better. That's all they know. And they don't know there's a wrestling season, all seasons, wrestling season, make sure you associate wrestling practice with ice cream and, going to Dairy Queen afterwards and just build up that, you know, we talk about wrestling as family all the time at, at Kaufman and um, it, it's fun when you're, you're, you're putting in a little bit of work and then you hang out afterwards. I know COVID's kind of put a damper in a lot of that, but, you know, we hope once this is behind us, we can continue to build up that, that family, you know, I guess feel that we, we, we worked so hard to build these last eight years at Kaufman. Is Blaze your son? Yeah. His name's Blaze. Yep. I, you know, I know that. I'm guessing it's right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. It was either Blaze or Breeze's. I'm going to go in Blaze's room. <laughs> okay, so wait, you have a son and a daughter? Yeah, my daughter, she's gymnast, gymnast. She spends a lot of hours a week, and I don't know anything about gymnastics, so I, I think she does well. <laughs> Todd Averill <laughs> did the same exact thing yesterday. He's got three daughters. They're gymnasts. Todd's like, yeah, I don't know anything about gymnastics. As long as they don't <laughs> fall off the beam, I, I assume they're doing pretty good. <laughs> Is that I know that, a little bit more? But. Does that feel good to go into something and be out of your element and not being asked like you know what does my kid need to do? How can we get him to be a champ? Not at all. It actually feels horrible. I feel really? horrible that I can't really help my daughter the way I help my son. My son plays football, wrestling, and baseball. I was a three sport athlete. I feel like I help him in every single one of his sports. I cannot even say anything but good job or are you working hard to my daughter? And then that's, that's frustrating because it's probably best obviously for our relationship, but uh, it, it's frustrating on my end. Cause I, I want, I'd love to know a little bit more about it. And I go to those competitions and it's like, Ugh. fish out of water. So, um, 
Fish out of water, right? What's that? Fish out of water. <laughs> yeah. How old are they? How old are your two kids? Uh, Blaze is in seventh and Breeze is in fifth grade. Okay, so two years apart. We, 10 and 12? Yeah, 13 and 11? Blaze turned 13 and she just turned 11. Yep. Okay, so 13 and 11. Okay. Awesome, coach. What do you, do you teach? Yeah, I teach. Uh, teach in Southwestern City Schools. I'm an elementary PE teacher. So oh, wow. Yeah. So how far do you got to commute every day? Uh, it's about, I think it's 18 or 19 minutes on my, uh, on my Mac quest. Yeah. That's not bad. No, I, I mean, I've put so many years in there. I can't up and change jobs at this point. I love my job. Um, it's different, um, it's a different, different type of community. And, uh, I feel, feel needed and wanted there. And it's, 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 a, it's a really cool feeling. So, I mean, but it, it's, it's, it's a tale of two lives. I mean, I, I get in the get in the truck and I drive to, to Kaufman after after school and it's that's when the real stress starts. You know that's when the real feel starts because um, it's just stress free. The kids they they light up when they see you in elementary as an elementary PE teacher. They love seeing you. They're the, you're their favorite subject. I don't think I'm always that popular when I walk into the wrestling room. So <laughs> gotta be the bad guy a bunch of the time. <laughs> All right, you gotta be the bad guy. Okay. So if there's a matchup you're looking forward to the most tomorrow, what would it be, whether it's an individual matchup or a duel that you guys are having, what, what, what individual matchup and or duel are you looking the most forward to for, for Double and Coffee? No, I think you said it earlier, 182 is um, across the board. It's going to be, it's going to be a tough go. It's going to, it's going to, you're going to have to show a lot of grit um, to get through that day. And, and you're, there's going to be some bumps and bruises and black eyes probably along the way, maybe even a little bit of blood, but, I think if Mitchell's ready to go, he could he could pull off some some W's. Maybe he wasn't expected it to pull off. So I he he's the one that stands out to me. Uh, but I could go across all 14 weights. I mean it it's stacked, and we know that we knew that going in. Um, like I said, if we're not at full strength as a team, we still have uh, you know a handful of guys that really need to up their their level in terms of uh, finding quality wins tomorrow. So we're looking forward to that. Nothing else. All right, everything, all your big matches tomorrow will be streamed live on GoHioCast. So your match, your duel with Bruxville, your duel with uh, Illyria, your duel with Lake Catholic are all going to be uh, streamed live free on GoHioCast YouTube. So check all that out. We'll be working with Mark Neiman and Sean Penn with Inside the Circle. We're probably going to be sharing some live feeds, and then I might be doing putting some other – like your matches with Pleasant and stuff like that might go on Grow Wrestling. So we're going to have a couple of different live YouTube channels where people, it's free. I'll be putting it out on Twitter and tweeting it at you guys, and hopefully you can just retweet it and your, your fans can see that. Oh, great. Thank you. Yeah, they can follow it. It's free. Subscribe. If you've got a Google account, subscribe. Free stuff. Go Hiocast. Check it out. Um, you got anything else for me, Coach? Nothing at all. I appreciate um, how you cover our sport, man. It's, it's, it's awesome. Um, just much appreciation on behalf of the entire Kaufman Wrestling family. We love it. All right. Well, we will see you guys tomorrow morning. Good luck. Go Shamrocks, right? Go Rocks. Is, or is it Shamrocks go rocks, or Rocks? Go Shamrocks. Yeah. <laughs> it's sweet. Hey, are you guys a Barbarian team, by the way? You got some Barbarian singles? Uh, I, th I think you got I a Barbarian single. Yeah, we, I, we go through uh, uh, Jason Barnett. He helps us okay. out there. So. So you work with Jason. Okay. I saw that you guys did have a, a barbarian singlet and this is the, I do the barbarian hour. So I like to give Josh a plug whenever I see it. So if you guys have, end up having maybe a barbarian singlet with you, I like to, you guys do have a sweet one. I, I think you do. So I have to check it out, but um, coach, thank you for the time. I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. All right, man. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Good luck.